Welcome back, team. My name is Clint Hoagland, and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our last video, we talked about arrays and how they work in Chuck. We also talked about the std.mtof function, an important convenience function that helps you convert MIDI note numbers into frequencies. However, in this series, I don't want to assume that you know anything about programming or music, so I don't want to assume that you know what MIDI note numbers are. In this tutorial, we're going to do a very basic rundown on music theory so that you'll have enough background to keep going and to do some musical experimentation that can quote unquote sound good and you can have the tools to play around. First, what is MIDI? MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and it's a decades-old standard for letting digital musical instruments talk to each other. It's a very good standard considering that it's still doing its job pretty well after all these years. However, MIDI itself is not the focus of this lesson. All you need to know about MIDI for this lesson is that it uses numbers 0 through 127 to represent musical notes. These notes all have a standard frequency assigned to them, which we touched on briefly in the last lesson, but what are MIDI note numbers supposed to represent musically? Consider a keyboard, like a piano keyboard. It arranges a set of notes from left to right. The frequencies of these notes is called their pitch, and the pitches on a piano keyboard rise as you travel from left to right. Correspondingly, let's hear a quick for loop that travels from 0 to 127 and plays each of those notes. Let's also throw a logging statement in there to see what frequencies correspond to which note numbers. Now you may have noticed that you didn't hear anything for the first couple dozen of those notes. That is because zero represents a note that is far below the range of human hearing. This is one reason a piano has 88 keys instead of 127. Let's look again at a piano keyboard. If you've never taken any music lessons, you might not realize that there is a pattern that repeats every 12 keys. This is critically important to every aspect of music theory and radically simplifies what we're about to talk about. For the purposes of making music in Chuck, assume that there are only 12 notes. After that, it just repeats again. All of the melodies you've ever heard in your life use 12 notes or less. Most songs only use 7 notes. They might jump up and down the keyboard a bit to be more or less bassy or have more or less high frequencies, but you only have a maximum of 12 notes to contend with. Now, the ways that you can create interactions between those 12 notes is called music theory. It's a complicated topic. You can get a college degree in it. I know this is true because I have two of them. However, to get in and have fun with Chuck, you only need to know a couple of chords and how to move them around. To keep things simple, we're going to start by limiting our understanding to two kinds of chords, major and minor. Major chords are usually understood to sound bright and happy, while minor chords are generally thought to sound darker and sad. Let's start writing some code. I want you to make two arrays. We're going to call them major and minor. Major is going to contain 0, 4, and 7. Minor is going to contain 0, 3, and 7. Now, I want you to chuck 48 into an int named offset, and I want you to create another int called position, but don't assign anything into it yet. Now we're going to assign a duration of 150 milliseconds to a duration variable called eighth. Now, we're going to write a couple of nested loops. This is going to look like a lot of code, but I think you'll be able to follow along. First, make a for loop that counts up to four. Then make another loop inside it that counts up to three. Note. When you are dealing with multiple loops within loops, you cannot use i in more than one of them. The convention is to use j for the inner loop. Okay, outside both for loops, let's assign zero to our position variable. Now, inside the inner loop, we're going to write our standard MTOF thingy, and in the parentheses, we're going to type major with j in the brackets, plus offset, plus position, and then we chuck it to our oscillator's frequency. Chuck your eighth variable to now. Let's play it back. Okay, so there's a couple things messed up here, so I gotta put in this int j, and then I spelled eighth wrong. So like that, and then there's another screw up here where I, I, this should be i is less than four and not zero is less than four. This is a loop that would last forever. Now let's try running it. All right. So it played through your major code one note at a time, and it played that four times. Playing a chord one note at a time like this is called an arpeggio, incidentally. For fun, let's switch our oscillator to a triangle oscillator and see how that sounds. Okay, let's copy and paste this whole block here, and we're going to change only two things. Change the position to minus three, and change the chord type to minor. 
Remember that we defined minor as a different set of numbers where the second number was a three instead of a four. Copy and paste it again and change the position to five and change the chord type back to major. Now copy and paste one more time and change this one's position to seven. Now let's wrap the whole thing in a giant while loop and play it back. So what we have here is a very dorky classic doo-wop chord progression, but the point of it isn't to sound cool, it's to show you how to move chords around. Now you can experiment with whatever positions and timings make you happy. Go nuts! Try this. Use I from the outer loop as your position, then change the value of your eighth note to something shorter, let's say 70 milliseconds. Pretty classic gaming sound. Let's try changing that value to 7 milliseconds. Whoa! Let's try inverting I by starting it at 48, stopping at 0, and then incrementing it downward. Pretty cool. How does this sound when you make the 8th last 25 milliseconds? So now, we're starting to see why Chuck is kind of neat even if you have other tools to make electronic music. Just by playing with what we have on screen here, we can make all kinds of fun sound effects. It's cool just to play around with these values. In this lesson, we covered some very basic music theory so that you can have some chords to play with going forward. In our next tutorial, I'm going to talk about what U-Gens are, and specifically the ADSR U-Gen.